Hi, and thanks for joining our webinar today. This is the last of our e-commerce series, and we're talking about emerging trends in the retail sector and what you as a retail or e-commerce business may want to be starting to consider as to emerge from this latest trend and curve of downfall to emerge as a much stronger and more trusted e-commerce business. This webinar is very much focused around building loyalty and trust, and it's in response to the wide-ranging limitations and changes that retailers across the nation have had to make. Anything from social distancing, uh, limitation of servers, in some cases moving to digital delivery, adapting to staff, not being able to attend the workplace, or in really extreme cases, the decision to pause trading or even close. So sometimes this is wrapped up into the concepts of business continuity, but in the retail sector, this could be anything from a local florist converting to delivery only, or moving your shop online for the first time and all of what that entails. We believe and we know that trust is a huge element of this. And today we want to talk about the techniques and strategies that we know can work and how you can apply them to your business. Most importantly, we're also wanting to give you the opportunity to tap into the expert who can give you a hand with this. So today's webinar is only going to be about half an hour because the businesses and the retail shops that we've been talking to lately are saying that they actually do need the time back. So we want to hand this one across to our panel to discuss what they know and also open it up for questions that you may have of us. So that's what we're going to be covering off today. So let's get into it and I'll introduce you to our panel. I'm Rachel and I'm a marketing manager here at Message Media. And today with me, I've got Damien Brennan, who is an e-commerce consultant. Damien, I'll get you to jump on the on the line and introduce yourself. Hi all, I'm Damien, uh, one of the consultants at Message Media and definitely specialising in the e-com space or and retail space, I should say. Um, Message Media has been around for about 20 years now. Uh, we are an SMS provider to a number of different industries and are the biggest and most re reliable in Australia due to our uh, unified gateway. Um, what we've done really recently is heavily invested uh, strategically into uh, working through with retailers in the e-commerce space to make sure we can support them, not just for um, communications, but also uh, on a wider term. Um, and, you know, one thing I'm really excited about today is, is talking through reviews and, and customer loyalty, because I think it is super important for brands moving forward. Yeah. And with us today, uh, we have the um, we have Tom Goodwin who's the Chief Operating Officer of Reviews.io. Tom, would you like to join us up, join up with us? Yeah. Hi there, um, Rachel. Thanks again for the invite today. It's great to be here. So, uh, yeah, like, um, like Rachel said, I'm the uh, COO of Reviews.io. I'm based in Australia. I moved here just over a year ago. Uh, super excited about the APAC region and uh, why, you know, we've, I've decided to base myself here as one of the leadership team. Uh, we've been around for just over 10 years as a business and we've got you know, roughly coming up to up to, up to 7,000 clients globally. We've got offices, um, like I said, in Sydney, Australia, in Berlin, in Germany, our head office and where we were founded um, in Leicester in the UK and also over in LA. And our, our team's grown from around 10 people to uh, nearly 70 now in the last two years. So it's a super exciting time for reviews.io. Um, um, we're a Google licensed um, product, um, reviews provider. So we, uh, with our Google seller ratings, we're able to really help you leverage that trust and, uh, you know, really um, make sure that you're, you're really promoting your feedback and loyalty across the, um, across the web. Fantastic. And with that, it sort of talks about a bit of a brief history of what has happened in the retail environment. If you talk about it over say the last 60 to 70 years and it has been this consistent thing of bricks and mortar going across to e-commerce but in the last few months there's no doubt that e-commerce has taken over and just because of a little thing like this so it's going to be a significant thing that's going to change the way that all retail stores go into the future but what it really means for us from the point of view of loyalty and how you can establish your brand trust and your brand loyalty online and how we how you can use the tools that are available to you, like what reviews I have, and how do you actually engage with those customers through the right communication channels. 
So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I'm going to start the panel conversation with you, Tom. So what so what have you been seeing through this? What are what are some of the things that businesses are talking to you about? Are they struggling, booming, pivoting? What's what's the sense? Uh, you know, we, we're seeing uh, uh, across all, you know, we, like I said, we've been around for 10 years now and, uh, you know, we've got a mixture of clients across sort of e-com bricks and mortar businesses who are using our solution. I think one of the key things that we're sort of seeing at the moment is that people are moving away from those larger online brands and moving to and pivoting to using those more local independent um, online e-com brands. And I think it, a lot of that are down is down to, I suppose, um it, it, there's a new there's a new buyer coming through you know it's the the rise of the new buyer coming through and i think it's they're concerned about you know availability and shipping and or if they don't like the product are they going to be able to send it back you know so we're sort of seeing and so you know certainly within our with our business we're seeing you know a lot of a lot of sort of businesses pivoting on that perspective so i mean in, in an area that's really booming for us and we if we look at our customer base at the moment is the new sort of buzzword of the new essentials i suppose is the buzzword that everyone's using at the moment um you know this whole stay at home lifestyle so yeah obviously we're seeing a lot of uh, you know we're seeing fantastic growth you know crazy growth from the brands that are in this all that creative space that homeware space that fitness toys you know anything that contributes to that stay at home lifestyle obviously we're seeing still we you know still seeing good growth within areas like you know high repeat purchase goods you know fmcg brands fashion and all of those sort of areas we're seeing good growth but obviously brands that are struggling a little bit more uh, a brand that you know are, are finding it um, harder to pivot online or in the sort of travel and hospitality space for the obvious reasons um, and I suppose the most exciting pivot that we're seeing really is those um, wholesale brands becoming a DT you know direct to consumer brands you know it's suddenly um, you know we're you know we're seeing we're seeing a lot of that um, and um, so yeah, you know, from that perspective, sorry, I've just uh, realised I've got something open on mine. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically, um, I think uh, that that sort of an area that I, you know, is, is an overview. That's where we are with that. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, really, just echoing what Tom says. Um, you know, one one boom that we saw at, at Message Media, which I didn't even think think of to be honest, was um, was like office supplies. So obviously, with everybody moving to a home, you know, setting up a home office, you know, the the wherever they could get things like stationery or de like desks and chairs and anything like that, or even headphones and you know, kind of the equipment that you're used to having in the office, we saw that as a as a real boom at the start of it, uh, um, at the start of kind of the that. And then I guess the the thing that I think will be quite interesting is once we start to pivot back to going back into the office. What are you know what industries and what kind of specifically retail industries will see um, see an increase there? Right. And Tom, can you tell me about a success story that you've actually seen out of this particular crisis? Um, and if it relates to the loyalty, you know how you build up loyalty and trust and that sort of thing. Um, who's doing things well? Yeah, I suppose I, you know, I, I, t I talked to my customer success team and looked at some of the data ourselves, and you know, particularly in this market in Australia, you know, the brands that we see are doing really well at the moment. We've got a relatively new brand that came on board uh, with Reviews.io called the Plant People. Um, so you know, very much you know, ordering um, fantastic plants and getting those delivered delivered home in a, in a really sort of cool way, and the way they've engaged in. In, in social proofing their brands you know it's it's very sort of creative the way they've done it the way that um the whole packaging and everything so seeing fantastic new brands like that other brands you know we've got a brand over in new zealand called dose and co um again just seeing huge um huge growth on that brand from a reviews collection perspective you know massive engagement um great use of uh of leveraging that review those reviews in social proof even now we've recently turned on a new video review feature within our collector pages so seeing really fun videos and people uploading um australian direct is a is a great neto client of ours in in australia who are on the neto platform and again seeing fantastic use of 
leveraging, connecting social channels, doing all of those things. And then uh, I suppose uh, it's a, a company right here in Sydney that we see is seeing great growth is Citizen Wolf. So, you know, from that fashion apparel perspective. So, yeah, some great success stories. Fantastic. Um, it, it's interesting you actually said the video one, the you know, new video review stuff. I've seen that on LinkedIn a few times. So many animals showing themselves being really, really happy <laughs> things. You can't, you, can't, you can't lose when you actually have animals to, to any kind of view, can you? Um, yeah. Damien, what have you been seeing? What's a success story you've noticed? Yeah, one that I'd, lo I'd love to call out as a customer of theirs is, um, is actually Muscle Republic. Um, we, yeah, they, they held a sale the other week, but their communication and I think their customer loyalty was fantastic because they had um, a lot of advertising pre-sale through Instagram and Facebook um, and, was, and was really kind of targeted towards, you know, obviously who they, who they wanted to attend. Um, then the engagement post-sale, because the sale went so well, lines sold out within 10, 15 minutes. Their engagement post sale to say hey this was you know crazier than we expected um we're taking pre-orders now for these as well and happy to kind of match those those prices was fantastic because i missed out on a jumper i was able to purchase or pre-order that jumper for when it comes back in stock but i think that for me was a great way to build uh like a, a brand loyalty or a customer loyalty because i now look at look at them as they've done me a really solid favor <laughs> um in allowing me to purchase what i wanted um, so yeah, I think that's been really great. Yeah. So, given given those sorts of experiences, what are the best mechanisms to engage with a customer to leave a review? And I guess Tom, if you can expand on that, why is it that you really want people to be doing that for you? Yeah, I think um, you know requesting review. Yeah, is is obviously one of some of the stats that are out there at the moment. A stat in Australia is 82% of Australians read a review before they buy. So I think it's that, and you know, there's only if you look at from a consumer perspective, only 33% of co consumers trust the information directly coming from a brand. So sharing that customer's voice, sharing that feedback, building that into that whole journey. So you know, including. Um, you know, feedback on abandoned cart emails, including it on checkout pages, you know, adding that social proof um, to, to, to your whole customer journey is incredibly important. So, you know, one of the things that uh, we sort of say, you know, it's personalizing that journey. And so it's looking at what's the happiest point in that, in that, in that journey and really requesting the review at that happiest point. You know, and, that, and that's different for lots of brands, you know, whether it's a service based brand, whether it's a product based brand, it's understanding at what the right point is. It might be on on dispatch, it might be on delivery, it might be on various, various things. But you no, know, I think nowadays with the with the great tools that are available out there, things like Clavio, obviously message media from a messaging perspective and the way that you guys, um, your customers are using it. It's really understanding what that point is and then it's very easy for us to build that into our solution. Yeah. Damien? Yeah, I think um, for the Tom's point, um, understanding where your customers are shopping as well. So um, if they're, I, I spoke about it in the last one, but really getting down into into your, your data, understanding if, are they shopping on mobile? Are they shopping um, through desktop? Or you know, even are they shopping in store? Um, and then as Tom said, timing that is the best time to, you know, to, Ask somebody for a review at purchase online probably not because they haven't received their items yet whereas if it's in store it possibly is you know time it straight after um the other part i i think is getting some urgency around getting the reviews um, i mean we're we're obviously in, in the space where we we know stats around sms and email but um just some stats around sms that i think is quite important definitely when you're asking for reviews is 90 percent of sms uh, um, open within the first two minutes of sending um which when it comes to a review and trying to get that information obviously it's something that the customer sees opens and can go through it um, straight away an average click through on an sms at the moment is around 19 percent where versus email you're looking at about 3.2 percent um and i know rach can attest to this but we've we've also seen click through rates for some of our customers as high as 60%, um, obviously yeah. depending on, on what that message content is. Yes, we 100% have seen um, up, an up to 60% response rate. In fact, I think one of our better ones was like something, something ridiculous like 75% on a service-based message. Yeah. 
So that's actually really, really good to know. And so I guess going on from that point then that you raised, Damien, how do you ensure a great customer experience? Because a great customer experience leads to a great review. So Tom, how do you how do you um, plan how do you get people to plan for a great experience to lead to a great review? I think nowadays, you know, we're very lucky uh, with, you know, the different ecosystem and, you know, different platforms that people have built their um, websites on, whether it's Shopify, whether it's big commerce, whether it's uh, um, WordPress, you know, all of those different platforms. I think nowadays it is it, so much easier to make content dynamic and it's so much easier to make, um, you know, to create personalization, whether it's on-site personalization or whether it's um, within text messaging, whether it's in, um, emails going out. I think it's so, and I think, you know, your customer is your number one salesperson. So at the end of the day, if you can build that personalized journey and, and treat that customer, um, you know, in a real bespoke way, then, then you know, the, that is how you enable great experience. And obviously to then it then leads on to the way that you request that review and the way that, um, you know, at what point you request that view, and what, and what channel you request that view um, review, and how then you promote that review, um, dependent on on your on your customers. But I think it is so easy now to create that sort of personalised journey and to identify um, who your brand ambassadors are. So you know, we we have a great feature built into our solution, uh, an influence feature um, that enables you to connect your Instagram account directly to the reviews.io dashboard. And we can identify who you're out of your followers, who are your who are your brand ambassadors, who are your influencers, have they shopped with you before? You know, how you know, um, have they left your review? And actually using those fantastic ambassadors of your business to, you know, send them some free gifts, get them, you know, get them to promote your business. You know, they're they're your number one salesperson. Totally. Damien. Yeah. I'd say the fir the first thing is like ask for reviews and then actually look at them. Um, you know the the building a great customer experience, you do have to actually listen to your customer. We can sit back, we can try and you know come up with ideas that we've got and go, yeah, this is the, this is the best way to do it. But until you you actually give it to your customers and they start using it, um, and and you get that feedback, you then have to be able to adjust off that. Um, so one thing I you know I guess my key thing is is putting the customer at um, at the centre of all decisions you make, um, you know I, I'm very guilty of it. But you know we live in a society now where consumers just expect everything to be easy. You know I want to be able to hit one button on my TV and Netflix comes on. I want to be able to complete a purchase in two clicks. Basically, you know one thing we see in our industry is um, when sending a link or sending a link to somebody via SMS, give it give them that link to the most direct page and the easiest thing for them to hit maybe one button after that and purchase the product because the second step you put in there you're just increasing the the likelihood of drop off um the one thing I'd, I'd also say and i think it's kind of been sped up over the last two months but we've really seen um brands forced to communicate communicate with customers more so than just kind of sales or just kind of updates but really talk about things like um shipping or delay updates as i like to call them um, you know, store open times, whether stores are still, you know, uh, trading or not trading, or how you can continue to do business with brand. Um, you know, one one great example, I've brought it up before, but there's a brewery down the road from me. Um, they were typically a, a go in, sit down type, uh, type venue. Um, obviously, with lockdown, they had to close their doors. But what they did was actually send a message to their customers and everyone on their database to say, hey, we're still open. You can now purchase online. This is the link to our to our store. Um, so people could still still deal with them. And I think from them doing that and that kind of over communication, that started to build like a really good relationship between customer and brand. Yeah. And it also provides that opportunity for, uh, particularly in a local world, to um, one, build a list, but then also continue to um, curate it so that it actually creates a stronger local community, which is really cool. Yeah. So on the, con on, on the reverse side of that, what techniques, Tom, would you be recommending to recover from a bad customer experience or it probably more in particular, what, what should you do when you see a bad review? I think, um, I think, uh, the most important thing to do with a bad review is 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 to obviously reply to it. And uh, you know we're 
we really encourage our brands, our customers to reply to um, re bad reviews publicly because I think there's, I think quite often what, when people go on and look at reviews and just see all five star reviews, again, it's the, you know, it's the trust factor there where if, if within those five star reviews, there is, you know, the odds, you know, two or three star, but there's a, you see that the brand has engaged and replied to that review and, and shown, you know, honesty and, and actually provided um, a reason or, or why why that they failed and why that bad review's been created. I think it's I think it's important. I think it's, it provides that you know there's authenticity there to to the the way that that brand is collecting reviews, and to just empower the team within their businesses to to you know to really look at you look at the feedback and and really um, shape the business around that feedback but rather than uh, you know not displaying that review or 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 or, sh or just ignoring it. Yeah, and I think um, I think it's really important that uh, just to bring up, we were we were speaking offline about it earlier that dealing with bad reviews is extremely tough. Like it it is a very hard thing to get right. Um, but I think yeah, number one is make sure you address it. If they leave a bad review, try to try to turn it into a positive by addressing what the problem was. Um, you know, obviously trying to come up with a solution for them if, if there is one. But um, as Tom just mentioned, then other other customers will see the effort you've gone to, to to solve that problem, and you know that that almost turns it into a positive because it goes, hey, the brand is actually listening. Um, one example I like to, uh, you know, I was thinking about uh, when we were, um, when Tom was speaking, then was actually happened at Message Media, where a customer of ours was actually having um, issues accessing our online portal um, from his Mac. Now we'd done testing, obviously through every web browser through all, all different systems and it was working but uh, but we couldn't actually replicate the problem he was having so we continued to dig deeper and deeper into it and we found essentially there was a small set the you know one setting on his mac something you know completely not related to us but if we swapped that over then yes it was we couldn't actually on um sorry we couldn't actually access our system so to be able to kind of dig deeper and deeper into something and go you know, and we're probably a little bit lucky that it's a tech business and we can do these things um, to dig deeper and deeper and say, okay, there's this one setting on your Mac. You've obviously adjusted it at some point. If you switch it back over, you'll be able to to access it. Um, he's we, he did that. It worked. Um, we were able to resolve it for him, so it was it was really good. But he is now a customer of ours um, because of the, I guess that that customer service effort. Yeah. Customers will always appreciate something where even if something goes wrong, if you go over and above to actually resolve for it, it can actually turn a really um, a bad situation to an incredibly positive customer outcome. And they can sometimes be your, better, your best advocates as a result. So I guess then the next question is, particularly on the review side, how would somebody get started today, Tom, to actually start collecting reviews and making sure that they can start being seen as a more trusted business, particularly in e-commerce? Yeah, I mean, from our side, we 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 make it as easy as possible for our customers. You know, we 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 have integrations across um, all the all the key platforms as well as our API. So you know, we we're really priding ourselves on being a plug and play solution. So it's it's about connecting connecting their solution, or you know, depending on what platform they're using, whether they're going onto the big commerce app store or the Shopify app store, or or using our API or any of those elements. It's really um, it's connecting, connecting, creating uh, email templates, building in that customer journey, and we can have people up and running literally with, um, within a few hours. Um, and then once you've got those reviews, it's about then using some of our um, great widgets that we have that enables you then to publish those reviews on site, which has got all um, information. You know, it's got things like rich snippet data, so that they're getting organic, uh, organic SEO benefits from reviews and really make taking up as much as Google's real estate as you possibly can, right through to obviously connecting with your Google Merchant Center and actually uh, making sure that you're getting those stars in your AdWords and reducing that C um, CTR costs and things like that. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty easy way. You know, we're working, we work alongside lots of the integration partners 
particularly in Australia, people like NITO, as well as um, the loyalty programs as well, which again, we're seeing a huge increase of. So loyalty lines, smile.io. And again, our fantastic partner network, including yourselves, as well as our agency partners um, within, the, within um, the market as well. I mean, we're, we, we've got a great custom success team based in Australia, which is pretty unique. We're, we bill in Australian dollars, which again, is pretty unique uh, against our competitors. So yeah, we're very proud to be in this market. Cool. Damien, how, do you, how, how would you recommend if somebody get started today with engaging their customers better? Yeah, for me, um, it's, it, you know, it's, it's as simple as start asking the question, I think. So, you, you know, using somebody like Reviews.io is super important. I think it's, it's something that, as I said, it, without it, you're kind of flying blind um, in terms of what your customers want or, or what they're looking for. So I think if you can start actually engaging with customers and asking the question, that that's my number one tip. Yeah. Great. So thanks very much, Tom and Damien. We're now opening up for questions. Um, and I'll start with um, the first question that came up, which is, uh, Tom, should you ever, should, uh, can, can you and should you ever delete a review? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we, we've got obviously the obvious uh, features built into our solution like profanity filters so you know if there's any profanity or or complete false information then obviously our solution has a moderation tool uh, for dealing with those situations um, I mean it's down to the customer in terms of what they want to publish on site um, you know there is that there's that there's that flexibility within the widgets but again it's the authenticity of the brands really that you know if it, are you going to trust a brand that all you see is five-star reviews the end of the day, no, you know, no one's no one's perfect. So I think it's it's important that you know one of the points we talked about earlier. It's important that you reply to all reviews, good or bad, and and you provide that um, connection to the customer from you know from real people. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, and then another one that has come up is um, how many times should you ask for a review? Like. Do you just keep going until you do it, or is there a sort of a number that you should just go? This person's not going to respond. No, I mean our, our systems. Our systems got um, particular features built into it to avoid that um, to to stop people reaching out. You know, our system uh, won't go out to a customer more than you know. It's over every three months is really when you request. So I think it's it's about establishing the the correct point in the customer journey that you ask for the review. And we see fantastic conversion rates, you know, whether you're using SMS, you know, particularly SMS obviously shows high conversion rates. We've got a great in email tool that allows you to write a review directly within the actual email rather than having to go through to a collector's page. So I think, and especially with tools like Clavio and Active Campaign and things like that, and building that that element in, I think it you you can design and manage how how often you reach out to a customer but certainly if you establish rather than just going for a blanket rule you know a b test um different different collection methods um a b um different designs building it into different um points in the journey i think you'll understand the the, the best point to collect and the, and the highest conversion rate yeah fantastic damien anything to add to that uh no i think i think tom um Tom went through it pretty pretty well, to be honest. <laughs> he's, he's, de he's definitely the expert in the space. So. Totally. Look, th that's actually all the questions that have come through. So not too many questions for us today. So look, as a final note, um, I'll just let you know that Message Media has in fact put through put together a COVID resource hub, which is available on our support site, which is support at mes support .messagemedia .com. Um, And while you're there, you can see the COVID category, which includes um, a checklist of what to do if you needed to get started. It is SMS specific, but you can use it for pretty much any type of communication, as well as some templates and some guidance around what kind of communications you may want to do. Again, it's focused on SMS, but you can actually apply this to pretty much any communication style that you may need to use, particularly if you need a little bit of an idea of what style of messaging beyond just the marketing and sales side that you may be wanting to consider at this point. Um, so that's actually all that we've got um, to cover off today. Thank you very much, Tom and Damien. Um, and just as an update, we will be sending out a recording of this webinar in the next day or so. So Thanks thank very you very much. much. Thanks, guys. Cheers, thank you. Cheers, thanks. Bye.